If you're like me and you like history, I think you'll like East. Well, we find that George Taylor was truly a man of his time, and his time was the 18th century. He was born and died during this period, passing away in the year 1781. George Taylor was an immigrant to the United States. He came here from Ireland, and his story is pretty interesting because he probably never could have possibly believed that someday he would end up being one of the very few people who could say they signed the Declaration of Independence. George Taylor was a foreign-born patriot who began his adult life as an indentured servant, but rose to be one of the 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence. This relatively unknown man's life is emblematic of the many everyday Americans who helped in our cause for independence. Taylor's story began in Ireland where he was born sometime in 1716, though we do not know the exact date or location. It is generally agreed that his father was a Protestant minister, but not much else of his childhood was documented. We do know that to obtain the money required for passage to America in 1736, Taylor agreed to become an indentured servant to Samuel Savage Jr., an iron master at Coventry Forge near Philadelphia. Indentured servitude was a system by which a person would agree to teach someone, the indentured servant, a profession or pay the fare for them to come to America and, in return, the indentured servant would agree to work for room and board, but no wages, for that person for a period of about three to five years. In any event, Taylor began his time for Savage as a shoveler of coal into the blast furnace at the forge. Probably owing to some education he received as a boy, Taylor was brighter than most and soon moved into a clerk's position. He must have done well and impressed those around him because when his boss died in 1742, Taylor married Savage's widow, Anne, just a few months later. Eventually, they had two children together. Incredibly, in the space of six years, Taylor had gone from a penniless laborer who could not afford passage to America to the ironmaster of two ironworks with a wealthy wife thrown into the bargain. Moreover, in 18th century British America, Taylor's position as ironmaster, which was essentially an entrepreneur of a large-scale operation, made him a person of significance in the local community. Not surprisingly, Taylor was the one and only ironmaster among the signers. Taylor was elected to the Provincial Assembly for Pennsylvania in 1764, and was re-elected for five consecutive years. He was a member of the committee to draft the instructions of Pennsylvania delegates to the First Continental Congress, a member of the Committee of Correspondence, and of the Committee of Safety. In 1855, the people of Easton honored George Taylor by erecting a memorial in front of the chapel. This is reputed to be the first public monument erected to the memory of any of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. Taylor was originally buried in the old Lutheran Cemetery at 4th and Ferry Streets, but his body was moved to its present site at Easton Cemetery in front of the monument. That happened in 1870.